Hi everyone, I'm sure all of you like to go for a little adventure. Today, we will be studying about an adventure story of a little girl named Katie and her friends. This story is an extract from a chapter called, Paradise, in a book titled, What Katie Did, written by Susan Coolidge. However, in some books, it is written that the chapter is an extract from William Blake's work, which seems to be a mistake. Now let's start reading the chapter. The place to which the children were going was a sort of marshy thicket at the bottom of a field near the house. It wasn't a big thicket, but it looked big, because the trees and bushes grew so closely that you could not see just where it ended. Here the story starts with children who are going somewhere. And who are these children? They are Katie and her friends. They are going to a marshy thicket, which means a forest. This thicket is located at the bottom of the field near their house. The thicket or the forest is not very big but it look big because the trees and bushes grow together closely. In the winter the ground was damp and boggy, so that nobody went there, excepting cows, who didn't mind getting their feet wet. But in summer the water dried away, and then it was all fresh and green, and full of delightful things wild roses, and sassafras, and bird's nest. These lines describe the forest. This forest was damp and muddy in winter. So nobody used to come here except cows. Because cows are not afraid to get dirty. But in summer when the ground is dry, this forest would be full of roses, bird's nest and sassafras. Sassafras is a type of tree found in North America. Narrow, winding paths ran here and there, made by the cattle as they wandered to and fro. This place the children called, Paradise, and to them it seemed as wide and endless and full of adventure as any forest of fairy land. So, in this forest, there are many narrow or small paths made by cattle or the cows. And the children called this forest or this thicket, Paradise. Paradise, means a very beautiful place or heaven. The children called this place Paradise because it was full of adventure for them. It was just like a fairy land for them. The way to paradise was through some wooden bars. Katie and Cece climbed these with a hop, skip, and jump, while the smaller ones scrambled underneath. Once past the bars they were fairly in the field, and, with one consent, they all began to run till they reached the entrance of the wood. These lines describe the way to paradise. First, they have to cross the wooden bars. Katie and Cece crossed them by jumping and hopping, while the other small children crawled under the bars. After crossing the bars, they were now standing in the fields. Then they agreed to run together till they reached the entrance of the forest. Then they halted, with a queer look of hesitation on their faces. It was always an exciting occasion to go to paradise for the first time after the long winter. Who knew what the fairies might not have done since any of them had been there to see. At the entrance of the forest, they all stopped and looked hesitated. They were always very excited to come here after winter because they think that fairies come and do something here during winters. Which path shall we go in by? asked Clover, at last. Suppose we vote, said Katie. I say by the pilgrim's path and the hill of difficulty. So do I, chimed in Clover, who always agreed with Katie. Here, all the children could not decide which way to go. As you can see, there are many paths here. So when Clover asked where they should go, Katie said they should vote. And she chose to take a path called the Pilgrim's Path and the Hill of Difficulty. Clover also said he wants to go there because he always agreed with Katie. The path of peace is nice, suggested Cece. No, no, we want to go by Sassafras Path, cried John and Dory. But we see here that Cece wanted to go to the path of peace. While John and Dory want to go to the sassafras path. Let's see which way the children will go. However, Katie, as usual, had her way. It was agreed that they should first try Pilgrim's path, and afterward make a thorough exploration of the whole of their little kingdom, and see all that happened since last they were there. So in the end, they all obeyed Katie. We can see here that most of the time, they always obey Katie. She seems to be the boss among the children. It was decided that they should first go to the pilgrim's path. After that they will thoroughly visit all the other areas to see the changes in the forest. 
So in they marched, Katie and Cece heading the procession, and Dory, with his great trailing bunch of boughs, bringing up the rear. So the children started marching. They were led by Katie and Cece. Oh, there is the dear rosary, all safe, cried the children, as they reached the top of the hill of difficulty, and came upon a tall stump, out of the middle of which waved a wild rose bush, budded over with fresh green leaves. When they reached the top of the hill of difficulty, the children pointed rosary. Rosary is the name of a wild rose bush with lots of green leaves. This, rosary, was a fascinating thing to their minds. They were always inventing stories about it, and were in constant terror lest some hungry cow should take a fancy to the rose bush and eat it up. So, this rose bush was a very wonderful thing for the children. They liked it so much that they used to make stories about it. They were scared that some hungry cow will try to eat this rose bush. Yes, said Katie, stroking a leaf with her finger, it was in great danger one night last winter, but it escaped. Oh, how? Tell us about it, cried the others, for Katie's stories were famous in the family. Here, Katie is trying to tell them another story about Rosary. She said that the rose bush was in great danger one night last winter. All the children were very excited to hear the story because Katie was very good in telling stories. It was Christmas Eve, continued Katie, in a mysterious tone. The fairy of the rosary was quite sick. She had taken a dreadful cold in her head, and the poplar tree fairy, just over there, told her that sassafras tea is good for colds. So she made a large acorn cup full, and then cuddled herself in where the wood looks so black and soft, and fell asleep. Katie was telling the other children that on Christmas Eve, the fairy of rosary was very sick. She was having a cold. The poplar fairy told her that sassafras tea is good for colds. So she made sassafras tea full of her large acorn cup. After drinking the tea, she fell asleep. In the middle of the night, when she was snoring soundly, there was a noise in the forest, and a dreadful black bull with fiery eyes galloped up. He saw our poor Rosie Posy, and, opening his big mouth, he was just going to bite her in two, but at that minute a little fat man, with a wand in his hand, popped out from behind the stump. It was Santa Claus, of course. He gave the bull such a rap with his wand that he mooed dreadfully, and then put up his forepaw, to see if his nose was on or not. Katie continues her story that in the middle of the night, a scary black bull was trying to eat rosary. But then a fat man took out his wand and stopped the bull. The fat man was Santa Claus. He hit the bull so hard that the bull mooed and reached his front paw to see if his nose was still there or not. He found it was, but it hurt him so that he, Mued, again, and galloped off as fast as he could into the woods. Then Santa Claus waked up the fairy, and told her that if she didn't take better care of Rosie Posy he should put some other fairy into her place, and set her to keep guard over a prickly, scratchy, blackberry bush. The bull found his nose was still there but it was so painful that he ran away. Santa Claus woke up the fairy and advised her to take good care of Rosary. If she fail, he will make her take care of the blackberry bush and send another fairy to take care of Rosary. If you enjoyed or find this video useful, don't forget to like, and subscribe to my channel for more videos.